just yeah. <laughs> every weekend. Listen, if I had the, upper, the the access that John has at all this amazing peptides, come on. I mean, if he was fast and he was the peptides, running the company. It's the events he goes to, um, yeah, the man's like, it's, no. he's got it's no off season. Happen. You talk about no off season. Johnny, that, that truly is you. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. You plus, wait, wait. Plus, it's got to fit inside his convertible. Yeah, car. you got to fit in those cars. <laughs> you get to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, Johnny at two sixty seventy, no go. <laughs> no, uh, uh, no. I, I don't think I. I, I, I mean, obviously, I've never been that big. I've been two thirty. It has been my biggest in weight. You know, and that was in the beginning when I started Titan. It was like bigger was better. You know, and obviously through the years, parties have changed, and I, I, I've come to realize and learn that bigger is not always better. It's all about quality over quantity. And uh, you know, for me, like it doesn't mean like I, I like the bigger look. You know, I mean that's that's what it is. Uh, the more muscle you pack on, the better. I mean, obviously, in a lot of different ways, if you can do it healthy and keep it on healthy. You know, so I'm all about that, and I, I want to look my best for Olympia. So I'm getting ready for that. I mean, honestly, like. You know, getting the hernia surgery, you know, it's it's yeah, it's six to eight weeks when you're down, maybe a little longer. But, you know, you really got to come back from that. And it's just it, this is my second one that I've had to do. And I've had, a, you know, I've had injuries in the past where I've had to, you know, go completely down. Like when I broke my, my clavicle, my collarbone, no upper uh, upper chest workouts, no arms, no nothing for like, I don't know, four months. And you lose so much weight and you get so, you know, beat down by it. And, it's a mental screw too as well, you know, especially if you're in great shape and you have to let yourself, you know, all you can do at that point, if you can't train is you got to be able to do something and that's eat right. And if you can eat right, you can maintain a little bit or not get overweight possibly. But, you know, a lot of people that they, they don't, they get upset, they get depressed, some emotion triggers them possibly to eat and they eat a lot more. Uh, they're not doing the activity, so they're not burning the calories. I mean, so that's another thing. But building the muscle back on, that's it's truly – it's a lot harder to, to build muscle than to lose fat, you know. But I don't know, man. It's uh, it's it's crazy. So coming back from those times, man, I'm like, man, there's there's nothing that's going to stop me right now. Even with the total shoulder replacement that I need, I'm still benching. These guys come up to me like, it's crazy. It's awesome, though. I'm like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready for Olympia. Mike's not going to show me up there for sure. And I, I love the fact that we have like little goals for us to get in better shape, like the Olympia, yes. for example. You know, yes. like I love that. So yes. it has to be something. It's like either a photo shoot, you know. Yeah. Olympia, it has to be a show. It has to be something, an appearance, a movie. Yeah. You know, when it comes to Mike, just to kind of to keep you you. You're falling off a little bit, or at least you gotta let your body come off a little bit because yeah. you can't be, in, you know, shredded yeah. all year long. But yeah. then when you find the goal, it's such a good feeling because now you have something to look forward to. Yeah. So we all, you know, we're gonna be going to Dubai obviously in a few weeks. Yeah. But the Olympia is also the goal to stay in shape True. and come in and to be able to walk around all these other athletes that are gonna be on That's stage, right. not, not hiding right. behind the curtain to be like I'm fat. Right. You know? That's why everybody comes. They all come to show out, right? Everybody's like getting ready because they all want to look their best because they know everybody else is going to look their best out there. So they're all getting ready on whatever the, they can, you know? Yeah, the fact that, you know, we are on social media and plus Mike has got, you know, a lot of followers and, um, you know, it's nice to actually be in front of your fans um, face to face and to say, you know what? Yeah, you look like yourself. Uh, or yes. you look even better and bigger than what I thought. Yes. Than to do all this fake stuff on Instagram and then you show yeah. up, nobody knows who you are. I've yeah. seen oh, 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 geez. I'm just <laughs> taking notes here, guys. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to jump back for a second because there was a note I didn't take down, and I, I want to just jump back over <clears throat> injuries and mindset was one of the things that you were talking about. Yep. And 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 there was something else that you were talking about at the very beginning of this about. Um, and I missed it. Myth, uh, building muscle and it's, yes, it's, thank you, I'll, I'll thank you. Head. And I didn't have my NAD today, but I will take it. And I no, did. <laughs> he had it. I didn't. So yeah. Okay, so muscle, it's harder I, than losing fat. If we can, just for a second, to stay on this point, because I've worked with and been around mm -hmm. uh, the most elite athletes uh, in, in mm -hmm. all sports, mm -hmm. and what finishes them is not the injury. But it is the mindset about the uh, security of the injury, mm -hmm. and and I, I've talked about this with a lot of these guys, and um, some of the guys that do come back are mostly wrestlers, 
Mm -hmm. uh, wrestlers do come back, but like football players and stuff, they don't trust the knees anymore. They don't trust it anymore, even though. Right. Um, and I've had big talks with Heath Evans about this, that it is that, that, and what separates, you know, these kids that are just freaks, right. genetics, to get into the pros is the mindset. And like Heath Evans even says, I'm not the most genetic. I'm not this, 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 and this. But he played 10 years, which is four times the average of an NFL player. First of all, just getting there as a fullback, which only half the teams have a fullback position, mm -hmm. and to play that sport. Uh, but it's the mindset. And you said it too, Johnny. You said when you got – you hurt yourself, operation. Mm -hmm. It was your mindset that kept you – relatively doing the best you can Absolutely. in that situation. Can you go a little further on that aspect? Because I sure, think, people sure. um, you know, for me, like mindset's everything, mind over matter, your brain controls everything in your body. Right. So if you can start really realizing this and, and, and utilizing it, you can really control everything that's happening. And to that point, like, you know, when you go down for an injury, you're like, you know, the first thing you're like, Oh man, you're throwing out your routine. If your routine is, is training every day, and now you can't go train every day. So that gets you down and gets you out of your routine. So what are you doing to change that routine to make it, you know, somewhat, you know, more active? If, if you can be active, if you're on bed rest, and that's one thing. But if you can be more active in one way or the other, then that's good. And that might not be physical stimulation. That could be mental stimulation, too, as well. You know, we really forget about those things. We always talk about lifting weights and stuff like that. But a strong mind is a strong body, too, as well. So if you can't do it physically, like, you know, with your body, then you do it mentally and keep yourself strong. That's how people that do it and they go in the hole in prison. If they have to really, they straight stay mentally strong, <laughs> right? Or they break yeah. down. And, you know, yeah. I mean, or, you know, I mean, people that are isolated and get cabin fever and all these different things. So mind is everything. Um, you know, I, I think. Just before you, you keep going, going just, what he just said is, is harsh. It is 100% true. Because when I've talked to inmates, it, they, they've said <laughs> they have my body. They right. don't have my soul. They right. don't have that. And, and the mindset keeps them right and they come out and they and, and they are not I mean, destroyed from what happened you know the other example that i give in, in that that really gave me motivation was pow's in the world war ii and what they had to go through when they were captured Can't and, and all and all the brutality that comes along with it right um and being mentally strong enough to get through something like that. Like that's like motivation for me because who cares? I got hurt. I'm not going to be aesthetically as pleasing as I used to be. Who cares? But if those guys can do it, then you can step up and do something too as well. You mentioned the mindset, the different, the level, yeah. that, I mean, that kind of mindset compared yeah. to a guy that just got injured. It's like, Come relax, on. dude. That, in the scheme of life, that is so minute. Exactly. And when you hear those stories like in person, like it's even more like, damn like this guy really got through something harsh like anything that i go through is probably very minimal to what this guy had to go through so what is that's one of for me first person problems is that what that's called the mindset when yeah first, first world problems it, it's it, my view of what i'm dealing with is bigger than anything in the world is that the, that's the mindset that they have yeah. I mean, basically, you know, at that point, uh, I mean, first of all, problems are somebody like, Hey, Oh yeah. You know, I, I didn't get the right color Mercedes or this guy didn't put my, you know, my car the right way. Like, that's a first world problem. You know, at that point, like, you know, somebody that's going through like problems and stuff like that, like get through it. I mean, I, I don't even know what you, what you call that. that would, I mean, personal perseverance, I guess right. at that point, you know, um, but yeah, I mean that's that's where it is. It's, it's got to be you got to be mentally strong, and and you get you can teach yourself to be mentally strong if you're not mentally strong. But it takes your action to do it. And at that point, I, I think coming up with a plan, and not just you know a lot of people they focus on the problem and they don't focus on the resolution. I tell Sharice when she comes to me or any of the employees come to me and they complain about something. I said, great, we can complain about something all day long, but what's the resolution? What can we come up with to really fix these things or to make a better plan? And that's where that comes back to eating properly at that point. Like if you're doing these right things when you're injured, you know, you heal, heal yourself back, you go through your, your rehab or whatever it may be, and then you get back to get, get strong. And then you got to trust yourself to go out there and do what, what you do. So, I mean, that's, that's what it is. I, you know, there's, there's plenty of people that have came back from injuries and there's plenty of people that haven't. Right. So it really does come down to, you know, physicality and, and then mental, mental strength and mental toughness. Some people are at the point where, you know what, I'm not doing this no more. And just they, they, they throw it aside like I'm injured. I'm done. Like, this is it. I'm not going to ever come back from this. And that's the mentality they have. 
you have some people that have the mentality, I don't care what is going to happen. I'm going to come back. And you have paraplegians that have said this and walked. So, I mean, there are people out there that have done amazing things just because the mental strength that they have. And it's not about physical strength. There's plenty of people like, you know, that are in wheelchairs that have mental strength that are outweigh something that's physically strong, can do a lot much more things. So uh, I, I believe it plays a role back and forth, but I believe, you know, mental, mental toughness is everything. And that's not just in the gym or getting your body back. That's in business. That's in life. That's in everything you do. So I, if you're mentally tough, and I know you guys are mentally tough. So at that she, point, like, she you is. know. <laughs> she's, she is. A, like I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning from her. Yeah, she's mentally tough. So, I mean, and, and if you go through, that's that's another thing, experience. It can make you mentally tough and physically tough. You know, like her experience in Romania, right? that, that makes somebody mentally tough, right? They have to do it. They go through these experiences. It makes them the person who they are. So yeah. it's super cool. Um, and you can you can always make yourself into whatever you want to be. So if you don't think that you're mentally tough now, start doing some different things that make you mentally tough, right? Put yourself through some challenges. I think that's the thing. People don't challenge themselves enough for the, you know, what? Uh, people tell themselves, I can't do it. And then you can't do it. You tell yourself you can't do it, you're not going to do it. You're just not going to do it. It takes for somebody else to tell you, you can do this, or you see somebody do it first, and you're like, oh, he did it. I can do it then for sure. So, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's grasping that. Being mentally tough and being a leader, too. I mean, I guess it goes right along with it hand in hand, but that's where I come into play. I think I've talked enough about this. No, no. I, it's a perfect good lead-in to um, – some of the peptides that are still available right now, if yes. somebody does get injured. So I, yeah. I want you to hit on that here before sure. we go into um, and just set you up on this next question. Sure. I want to go into sure. it after you talk about peptides, about injuries, sure. let's go sure. into the understanding. You said this, and this is great because this is an old school for everybody here. When you ask about nutrition, about bulking and, and getting that size in the muscle, it is so hard <laughs> to build muscle. And that's why there's a percentage, a, a ratio of I will gain four pounds of fat to that one pound of muscle in the off season because fat is easy to get rid of. Right. Muscle is hard. And so you need to be in the surplus as you're moving through this, this stage. Mm -hmm. um, but that goes again, again, when you're injured, you may put on a little bit of calories to help your body heal. Right. right. And again, Johnny said it, it's like, it's okay. Try to build some muscle. Make sure mm -hmm. to take in the calories and heal up. So, Johnny, real quick, before we get into that, peptides that are going to help some of these people that are dealing sure. with the pains and stuff, sure. if if surgery is not an option right now. Sure, sure. And obviously, listen, surgery should be your last option on the table, right? Um, this is something that, you know, listen, I'm all for surgeries. I've had surgeries, you know, plenty of times. So, if you need it, you need it. But if you can do something to avoid it, do it. Um, and at this point, peptides, they're still around BPC-157, TB-500. There's also a substitute for BPC-157 if it does go away, when it does. Um, at that point, these are healing peptides. And for me, they've been a game changer. For so many different patients that we've had at Titan, have been a, a game changer. And I'll just give you, for me, an example. You know, I have uh, a shoulder that's, you know, gone pretty much, right? Need a total shoulder replacement. I'm bone on bone. And I'm still able to bench 275 pounds, good 12, 14 times, no problem, tearing up from others. Right. And then at, at my four set, I was doing it with Peter last night. I was, I was super impressed with him. Um, the way he trained yesterday, two days, first day of school. Like he really, he cranked it out with me and doing back and chest and, um, you know, and, and doing that, like, you know, a four set, like, you know, 225 and doing it for 20 times. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm still rocking and rolling, you know, at that time. So, um, but these things have been a game changer for me. They're going to be a game changer to get inflammation out of the body and to help repair those areas there are damage or you have, you know, allergies in. So if you have acute pain, uh, you know, chronic pain or injuries, these are the therapies that are going to help you the best out of anything that's out there. Um, you know, bringing blood to the areas that need to be healed, taking the inflammation down in the body. I mean, that's one thing that I get right off the bat. When I inject myself in the morning, the inflammation goes away on my shoulder. I get more movement and mobility, which is awesome. Um, it can work on joints, tendons, ligaments, muscles, um, you know, so soft tissues. When we talk about TB500, those connective tissues that Mike always talks about, um, you really want to take care of those things and be preventative too. 
So you don't have to wait till something gets hurt to say, oh, I need to take these. You can be more preventative with these peptides too as well and utilize them. So maybe you don't have any problems in the future and you're giving yourself a little bit more extra um, in those areas that, you know, may need a little more TLC than others. You know, joint areas for sure, ligaments and tendons and stuff like that, man, for sure. And I didn't have anybody, to, you know, telling me like, Mike was saying like, make sure that you're taking care of these connective tissues. It was like, you know what? I'm going to go hard as hell as long as I possibly can and just ride it so the wheels fall off. And that was my, that was the young mentality for me, for sure. Especially an athlete or whatever it was, like I was in military school, whatever. Like the whole point was, is to keep going. It wasn't to stop. It was just to keep moving forward. So, you know, that mentality obviously is not the best mentality for me now on my shoulder, but you know, that was, it's what it was. I live and I learn. Right. And hopefully, you know, this is what I try to, give this knowledge. I know you do too. They're cheat codes for these younger guys. Don't yeah. do these things. And you're, you're, of course you're like, Oh, this guy's giving me a, a lecture and I'm not giving you a lecture. I'm just giving you guys really good valid information. So you guys don't make the stupid mistakes that I did or anybody else did. Cause I, you know, you see him, you recognize him, you do it. Cause if you don't have the knowledge and experience, you'll never recognize it. That's true. Um, so I'm looking to see if anybody got any questions regarding that. I don't see much here, but if someone got injured and they want to do a protocol, a, a protocol, yeah, to to obviously heal themselves sooner than later, uh, how long do they have to be on this protocol? Like, what is the timing? Do they sure. have to be off? Do, like, can you give us just a little information? Because yeah, like, point. I don't have money to be on this like for the rest of my life. Of course, life, you know? of course, of course. So you don't have to be on this forever. This is something you can take if you have, you know, you know, pain that you want to try to get rid of. Usually between six and ten weeks is what I tell somebody. Usually, um, and at that point, like you know, this is something you can do preventative, maybe once or twice a year if you want to do something like that. Um, but you don't have to do it forever. So if you know you're looking to do this, you, you have to be on a financial budget. You can budget for those six to ten weeks, and hopefully you'll get the result that you're looking for. Uh, it's not going to like. Um, you know, we call it, and I don't call it, but they do call it out there, the Wolverine protocol. And when we think about Wolverine, because I, I just told Mike, I've seen this movie four times in the movie theaters now. I absolutely love the movie. But at that point, like Wolverine, when he gets shot, bullets pop out of him. Okay. This is not going to happen with you. So don't shoot yourself thinking this is going to pop out or broken bones are obviously going <laughs> to back together. Right. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. But you know, if we're talking about like tears, like, you know, like slap tears in the shoulder, this is, I've healed my own slap tears. So I know it helped me. It'll definitely probably help you guys out there. So if there's issues like that in knees, joint areas, you know, ligaments, tendons, muscles that you're dealing with, this is definitely a good way. Uh, a lot of people complain about wrist problems. I've had ankle issues. You can deal with that. I mean, everything you could possibly think of injury wise, you can do. And like I said, six to 10 weeks is probably going to be, um, you know, your sweet spot of what you want to do the medication for. Just FYI, mm -hmm. going off of last shows, we had a guest on Jerry, uh, Jeremy Davis was yeah, on last yeah, week, yeah. who's dealing with a bicep, uh, I guess a tendonitis, I guess you would mm -hmm. say. Yep. He's been, then he got a shipment in and he's been on it for like three days. And he had some biceps this morning and messages and goes, dude, is it supposed to work that quick? Oh, like, wow. This is great. Now, again, this is one person. It's one, right. one thing. And, and he's still right. a young cat at 40. And right. so it works for him. And hopefully that will, you know, for others as well. Uh, is, it, is it guaranteed to work in three days? Well, no, that's let's hope. Right. But, but again, six to eight weeks. Yeah. Remember, Six to eight weeks, I can say, you know, I mean, I've had people that have tore their, their hamstrings. I mean, completely purple in the back end, um, heal within 10 to 12 weeks. And that was awesome. Like this doctor was like, how the hell did you heal so quickly? And he told him the doctor actually called up about some of his other patients. So it's, it, I've, I've had like pretty much every kind of injury you possibly can think of, whether it was a bicep tear completely. Drew did that. We healed him pretty quick. Um, the, you know, the hamstring tears, road rash. So even if it's topical per se, if you had road rash from a motorcycle accident, we use it topically and we inject it on the patient. They heal faster than what they, they were supposed to too as well. So there's a lot of cool things um, that it can be utilized for. And if you have these issues, golf elbow, tennis elbow. So here we're here. You know, and this is debilitating for some people. So I know when I've had tennis elbow or golf elbow in the past, 
even putting my arm like in my escalade, like on the center council would hurt. And I'm like, ow. Or if you try to do a, a pull down, a, you know, like a tricep or whatever it was, you're like, oh man, this really hurts. So you can't do it. And it's debilitating. You're like, damn, like I can't pick things up. You go to shake somebody's hand, whatever, whatever it is. But, um, you know, these, these things can be healed pretty quickly with BPC and TB500. So a lot of people usually have those as common injuries and that's because they move their wrists when they're, when they're training. So BPC and TB500 are a couple of those things. And I think- BPC157, TB500, yep. I have one more question. Real quick, sure. for everybody taking notes, make sure to write those things down, guys, so you understand. And then also there's some other um, peptides that uh, I guess help in a roundabout way like if you raise your IGF level, that will also help uh, recover some of those uh, ligaments and stuff yeah. as well. And Johnny's talked about that. So make sure to check out some of the past episodes on that. So not only is there direct to it, but there's some other peptides that because they're helping you over here on yeah. one thing, there's still yeah. a second benefit to it. So there's, oh, a, yeah. there's a lot of options. So don't give up. Main thing yeah. here, is injuries make you feel like you're done. And it's the worst thing in the world, you know. It's the, it's the sick man who wants one thing, where the healthy man wants a hundred. And, and mm -hmm. at that point, you're the sick man, and all you want to do is be injury free and yeah. lifting again. So I yeah. fully understand this. Me too. Make the phone call though, and, and and try this out before before, like Johnny said, surgery's last thing. Try the peptides out. Try that out for six to eight weeks. Yep. Let us know what you think and how yep. it's working. And uh, talk to your specialist at Titan Medical yep. about these things. Sorry, Mo. Just uh, just to clarify, though, for the BPC and the 500, TB500, TB 500. Yep. do you need or do you not need to do blood work to get this? So no blood work is needed for any of the peptides like that. Okay. The, only the only time you ever need blood work is for hormone replacement therapy or IGF-1 or vitamin D because that can be toxic. I just want to clarify for everybody, you are able to just make a phone call and order your peptides. Yep. You fill out the new patient paperwork. You're going to yep. see the medical provider. And if you're not here in Tampa, no problem. It's a video recorded visit. So you'll see them. They see you. You hear them. They hear you. You'll talk about what your goals are. They're going to go over all your medical history, your, your family health history, you know, right. see where you're at activity-wise, drink your water, all these good things. And they come up with a regimen that whatever your goal is trying to accomplish. So if that's Listen, you're trying to build the muscle, you're trying to heal, you're trying to grow your hair, uh, you want better, you know, action in the bedroom or to be able to give it, um, you know, all these different things we cover. If you want to balance your hormones, feel better, look better, perform better, Type Medical Center has you covered on all these different things. There you go. There we go. Okay. So if you don't mind, um, we've got a great crowd today. Hey, hello, yeah, everybody that's here. here. Uh, we see a lot of the Giga chat guys <laughs> on here. I love the it. The Gigas. Um, hey, can we talk about... Uh, bulking up off season. Um, mm -hmm. I'm okay with that word bulking. I, I understand it just means a surplus and you're a little bit bigger. Um, right. But can you talk to them about when, when someone is bulking, the, the ratio of the, the possibly how much fat do they gain compared to muscle or anything like that? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, I guess everybody's different to a certain degree, but as you start going up into your calories, right, you're going to start going that surplus. Um, you know, you're going to start possibly gaining some fat if, if you're not, you know, expending that energy. So, you know, weight wise, I, I guess it really depends on what your diet is too, right? When you're bulking, some guys, they say they're bulking, they go to McDonald's three times a day and they're taking <laughs> 5,000, 6,000 calories like that. You know, you see some other guys who are taking weight gainer and, you know, they're trying to eat clean and try to get three to 4,000 calories in. Um, you know, that's more like me of some of that, that stature without, going to <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, but you know, I mean, how much weight are you going to really gain? You know, and, and I guess, you know, over time and, uh, you know, I mean, 12 weeks would, I guess would be a good starting point to start. Look, um, I mean, I would say, you know, depending on, you know, what your diet is, all that, maybe 10 pounds, maybe, I, I, but a fat, I, I really wouldn't know unless we did a body composition to be totally accurate. Five to ten pounds, though. I mean, I guess. I mean, what, what, do, what do you think on this? I mean, I think is... that, and, and I agree with some of the, uh, a lot of the old school guys that talked about this, from Lee Haney to um, some great ones, Barry DeMay, or, or even Mike Mentzer talking about this, or even earlier than that, Bill Pearl or, or Steve Reeves talking to me about off season, and the ratio should try to be around one pound of muscle to four pounds of fat. 
Oh, I got you. Off season. Sorry, I misunderstood the question. Of course, no, I, yeah. I didn't explain it well. That was my bad. That no, was my right. bad. But but so like if you're gonna gain. 16 pounds of fat for a, a big 220 pound guy, right. you know, that seems like a lot, but you're gaining four pounds of additional weight in muscle mm -hmm. and muscle is hard. And, and I remember as a youngster, I was always told, Hey, really good year of training off season. You're great. If you got five pounds of extra muscle for and I was sure. so bomb though, I was I know. five. I know. Oh my God. Gosh, five pounds, that sucks. I'm going to do all this work for five pounds of muscle? Yeah. Yep. Guys, yep. you compound that five pounds of muscle. Yes. In four years, you got 20 pounds of muscle. In eight yes. years, you got 40. It really sounds terrible at first, especially to a 12, 13-year-old kid. Of course. Wanted to be 200 pounds right then. <laughs> but in time, that weight really if done correctly, you get to retain it. You get to keep it for a lifetime. I keep saying this. Look yeah. at Johnny. In, in in my terms, Johnny's very young. But I, I think to society, and I get these messages all the time, most people are done at 35. 35, yeah. oh, I can't get that physique. Johnny's walking around at 40. Most yeah. yeah. closing in on 50 looking like this. You know, you yeah. got the youngsters, Jeff over here, looking like Larry Scott with 20-inch arms. Yeah. Um, but just <laughs> barely hit 30 now. Um, yeah. It adds up, so be patient. And I know that the 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 weight of the fat is not appealing to you, but at the same time, are you healing the body? Is the body, is the blood markers good? Are you healthy? Um, right. are, are you still active? Right. That's going to kind of give you a guideline of, okay, I've put enough weight on. Let me retain this weight by staying here for a bit. And then you can slowly start slicing that weight up and retain that couple – um, pounds of muscle. Yeah. And here's some other things that will help you retain that muscle. Johnny, take us into the person that is 35. Sure. It has the low T and sure. then starts the HRT. Yep. What is that going to do to his body and how he retains that muscle? So it's going to be a totally different ball game. The lights are going to turn on inside the body. Everything is going to start working like it should. If you're 35 mm -hmm. years old and you have low testosterone, your body is going through some <clears throat> shocking processes and it cannot do what it really wants to do um and this could mess up a whole bunch of different things too like your metabolism sugar levels cardiovascular and all these other things so getting a nice healthy testosterone level is really really important and to be able to keep it and what does this do for muscle building because that was a question you asked so when we do this we're going to retain more muscle when we have this testosterone in our body if we have less testosterone we're going to lose more muscle mass over time than what we would do That's if we have natural higher. Oh, that was weird. Um, so at that point, we want to make sure that those testosterone levels are good. And not only just for muscle building, for lean mass. You're not going to turn to Arnold Schwarzenegger if you're not that big already, right? But at that point, you're going to retain that lean muscle mass. You're going to be able to put on additional lean muscle mass too as well, which is key. Because over time, as you get older, you want to put on as much lean mass as possible because at this point if you do get cancer or any of these other things you're at a higher probability to actually live and to be able to supersede the cancer i, I learned that with my dad i was like holy shit so the, the bigger you are with muscle the more you are inept to if something does start attacking the body it takes a lot longer to break down which is kind of cool i was like oh that's awesome yeah. So, you know, that energy levels, libido levels, concentration levels, that's another one that we don't even talk about or think about with testosterone is what we think about is physicality and libido. But when we talk about the testosterone receptors in the brain, we talk about clarity of thinking. And that's a really, really big one for people out there, right? Um, so we want to make sure that we have clarity of thinking. We want to make sure the libido is good, the energy is good, and we're able to build that lean quality mass still. Um, because if you're at low T at 35, it's not going to get any better. It's just going to keep going down. And you're going to feel even worse. And this can cause depression too as well. It's another big one that a lot of people oversee. I was just reading an article about it today. You know, a lot of people don't even look at this as, as far as general doctors. Um, they don't run this test right away, so they don't do it. And if somebody comes in their office, like me or you, and we say, listen, we're feeling down, doc, and we're feeling depressed, and, you know, we have libido issues, most of the time they're not going to run a blood test, and they're just going to give you medications like antidepressant and libido enhancer. 
And that's not going to correct the problem. That's just going to mask the problem. And you're going to have to utilize these things to even help the problem. And at that point, you're not going to get anywhere. It's just going to get worse. So it's really important to look at these levels and to make sure that, hey, listen, one, they're balanced. And listen, if it needs to be optimized into a good, healthy level, then we're going to do that. Um, if not, then you're going to be on a, a it's, your quality of life is going to suffer every single day. And it's going to get worse year after year after year. So it's really important. I, I say for anything else, that would be the foundation. If I had to pick one thing from Titan Medical Center, you know, that if I needed, right, if I needed, that would be HRT. And that's because it does majorly function a lot of different things in your body that we know right off the bat. And you can work just with having good testosterone levels and your body working harmonically to get good results in whatever you're trying to do, whether it's weight loss or gaining lean muscle or whatever it is. Um, you know, you don't need the extras per se, but the extras will help and expedite different things and different causes if you want to do that too. So if you really want to expedite weight loss, hey, listen, we can throw something in there. We can expedite weight loss. If you really want to gain a little bit more lean muscle, I think we can add some different things on here to hopefully help you get there. Um, you know, so it just, it just depends on what the patient wants to do. And, you know, when we talk about things like this, when we were just talking about like weight gain, weight loss, you know, weight gain, you got to do over, you got to do over a, a certain amount of time. Cause if you gain too much weight too fast, it's unhealthy and you will put stress on the body, stress on your organs, like your heart. Um, this could throw all the different things off too, as well, like cholesterol levels and all these other different things. If you really don't watch out for them. So it should be put on over time. Like you're talking about instant gratification. It's only going to happen to a certain extent. And it doesn't matter if you eat 20,000 calories every single day and you take every single chemical out there, you're only going to gain so much lean muscle over that time period. And that's just what it is. Yeah. For everybody that's here, don't, don't rush this stuff. Make sure that you just take your time and continue to um, move through this slowly. Health and fitness is again, uh, we put a little something up today. It really is the long game, right? And so that's that's one of the big things. But again, if you are, I guess you say on the fence of what you want to do with your health and fitness and you don't know where you're at, uh, what I will do is I will, I will sponsor somebody and pay for it. But uh, today, if you guys ask, if there's a, somebody out there that asks the best question, I'll sponsor you to get blood work done over Ooh. at Titan Medical um, and see where you're at. And this is for anybody that's in, in their 30s, 40s, 50s, wherever it is. Um, awesome. Ask some questions here. I'll do the sponsor. I'll take care of you and uh, get you in there. But what There's actually I, some good questions on here. You want me to start shooting some off? I would love you to do so. Gotcha. All right. So one guy, Secret Dance, who says, any advice to get rid of gynecomastia? No matter how much I train or eat, I still have it. This is a very common thing for men out there. And I didn't even know this until I had my son. So 50% of males when they're younger get gynecomastia as a kid. And a lot of them grow out of it. Some don't grow out of it. It just is what it is. I never had to deal with this as a kid. And I didn't know too many kids that around me that had this when I was a kid, to be honest with you. So I never really dealt with this until Peter started growing. And when he was young, like, you know, five, six, seven, eight years old, it was totally fine. When he really started hitting his spurts, that's when we really started seeing, you know, the gynecomastia really, you know, start forming. And then I took him to doctors because I was scared right away. I'm like, I ran blood tests on him. I want to see, hey, listen, is his hormones out of whack? Like, what's going on here? Um, and at that point, his hormones were all in check at that time. So it was nothing we could do. I was like, all right, maybe he needs an estrogen blocker. Maybe we could throw something in the mix at this point. Right. And then the doctors, his pediatrician, obviously I want to go to his pediatrician, you know, because when I talk to patients or everybody else, I know what it is and I know what to do. When it comes to your kid, you always second guess yourself. Like, man, like, uh, uh. I don't know. It sucks. But at that point, I want to get the pediatrician's, uh, you know, you know, what he thought his opinion. He told me, he said, listen, he said it, he'll probably go out of it. And it's gotten a lot of better over time, but it still hasn't gone all the way yet. Like he's still like when we go to like the water park this weekend, you know, I, I know how it feels like, you know, he starts pinching his nipples. So he like start getting hard. So like they don't look like that. Because he's not public, still going you know. Puberty, though, because I know that it's a puberty yeah. thing for for boys. That, yeah, that they, yeah. That, that I mean, it's, it's not, a puberty thing. Yeah, it's very but, different for the adult that gets. Yeah, it. so that's what I was going to get to. If you're yeah. an adult, right? If you're an adult and you get gynecomastia, and you can get this from a variety of different things, like antidepressants, right? They say possibly smoking too much marijuana. They say there's studies out there. They have this thing in there. I don't know about that, but it must be a massive amount. 
<laughs> or you take anabolics of some sort. Like let's say you take testosterone and you don't take an aromatized inhibitor, an estrogen blocker. You can flare up. There are people that naturally have high estrogen levels without taking anything either. So there's those people too. But if you take something or it doesn't matter, you get kind of capacity as a male and you're older, there's no way to get rid of it. No diet that's going to do it. No exercise plan. Now, will it make your chest look better if you build up a big chest? Possibly, right? But you're always going to have that tissue on the end. Then there's a little, it's like a hard little button is what I want to call it, inside of that. And that, that little tissue that's in there will not go away unless it's surgery. So you get the surgery and you cut it out. And that's what happens. That's why we need a little bit of estrogen and all these different things because we need to grow tissue. But we have a high amount over a long period of time. It grows too much tissue like this. And when it's a female hormone like estrogen, it's going to make it look like a female appearance. So when you take high levels of masculine hormones like testosterone, you're going to look more masculine. So girls that take a lot of testosterone look kind of like a dude, right? And guys that take estrogen, <laughs> baby carrot. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, so I mean, there's things that happen with this, but uh, the only thing that you're going to do is you're going to have to get surgery to get it taken out. And like I said, I deal with a lot of people that have had this done. It's a pretty, you know, common surgery, I would like to say nowadays for a lot of guys out there that deal with this. Um, there's two different types of doctors out there that the way they deal with something like this, some cut out the complete um not the valve but the, the complete like uh shit uh gland? gland thank you yes gland so they can completely cut it out or they, they they cut it down very minute now if you get it out completely cut out you better go to somebody that knows what they're doing because i have seen uh nipples invert because of this so you don't want that, he's got, right? He's got, more, he's got more information than he expected. This wow, wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> invert. So, uh, and then, you know, and then if you don't get it all cut out and you do anabolics later on down the road, it's not going to be a guarantee, but there is a possibility that it could come back again like this. So you want to just make sure you find a good surgeon that knows what they're doing. They've done a plenty of amount of these gynecomastic surgeries, and there's a lot. There's a there's some really good doctors I know out of New York. I know there uh, there's a ton here in Florida, because I mean I don't know how many patients come into me and just talk to me about it. Because there's a lot of guys that go to the gym, they go to their the, the dude in the gym, they buy the stuff from the dude in the gym, or they have boys that hook them up. They don't do things correctly. They have this problem that happens, and they deal with it for a long time. And then they come in and they say, "All right, John, like, what can I do to get rid of this?" That's a that's one of the most common questions that I get. How do I get rid of gynecomastia? And I'm like, damn, well, there's that many people out here that have gynecomastia, you know? But at that point, I always tell them, like, listen, you're going to have to get surgery done. This is what you're going to have to do. Uh, and at that point, you know, you'll feel more confident because who wants to work out out there and have a beautiful physique and have man boobs? So when you take off your shirt, you're at the beach and you're ready to, you know, you go, go milking. You're not, you don't want to do that. Like, guys don't want to do that. They want to get it cut out and just want to be good to go. So. Just is what it is. Let me give you this one here. Recommendation. 215 to 235, protein of 240, went at 215. Am I reading that right? Yeah, what 14. is he asking? I don't yeah, know. What is he asking, what is he asking yeah. Jeffrey? Um, Hold on for a sec. 215 seconds to 235 $235. Protein at of 240 when at 215s. Oh, you guys don't get that? Mm. This sounds like a like a military code. Yeah, yeah. I like this right one there. better. Yeah. Go As a new it. patient at Titan Medical, is it recommended to have blood work done while currently on peptides or wait until three to four weeks after off the peptides before doing initial blood work? You can do your initial blood work anytime question, with yeah. peptides. It's a great question. Peptides are not going to affect anything with testosterone. Right. Peptides, some peptides can affect growth hormone levels. So IGF-1 levels could change, um, but you're not going to get to see anything in blood work that's going to affect hormones or anything like that. So would you want to know, I know, I know you went to a hormone in that sense, but don't you want to know what the peptides are doing mm -hmm. to your IGF? Don't you want to know sure. what the peptides, if you're taking like glutathione, what they're doing to your liver, kidneys, sure. where sure. the levels are there? Those are kind of beneficial 
to be doing it and seeing what the result is. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Right? I always say, listen, you should get a baseline and see exactly where you're at. And then you have something to go back to and reference back to, you know, even if it's IGF-1 level. So if you're saying, listen, I'm going to start taking tests from Roland. All right, cool. We can run an IGF-1 test on you. Just the IGF-1 test if you really just only want to run that test. But I would recommend running all the tests because who cares? Even if you're not on peptides or anything like that, we want to make sure your liver is good. Right. Yeah. We want to make sure your prostate's good as a guy. Hey, is cholesterol where it needs to be? Because your nutrition might need to change. Yeah. Right. I mean, there's different things that you want to look at in the blood. You know, it might not even be correlating to peptides just to make sure you're healthy and on the right track there. But with peptides, like you said, if you are taking some of these things, like let's say you have a fatty liver, right? Your liver functions are 100 and 100, ALT, AST. And we're like, hey, listen, you're going to go on glutathione. We already have the blood test. Now we're going to do a, a follow-up in 30 days of your blood test to show you, hey, listen, it's came down. And this is really what you want to see. You really want to see improvement on labs and you want to trend. You want to see the trends. So you want to do some labs. You don't want to just not, I don't need blood work for peptides. Who cares? I'm not going to do it. Like, well, no, you're cutting yourself short because you really want to see that data on what's going on inside your body, even if it's not correlating with peptides. Because BBC 157, TB500, if we took that, there's not going to be anything that's going to change in a blood test, right? But if there's something wrong on that blood test that we didn't, didn't even see or you don't even know about, then how can we make an educated decision about whether we want to fix it, optimize it? Maybe there's something like on your PSA and it's a 10 and it's only supposed to be a, oh. a three or a four, right? Like now we've caught early stages of prostate cancer possibly or an infection of prostate. Add something. To Do you want to add something to this? Yeah, I want to add something right. to this because Mark is asking the right question. Yes. So we don't know what peptides he's on, right? right? From what I understand, when you get your peptides, you really get them because you get them, but you also talk to a professional from Titan right. Medical. Right. Now, if you are on biotin for your hair, mm -hmm. I was told that that might be something that you might want to be off before you do a blood work. So Because I'm not of sure. a thyroid. Yeah, because of certain I've heard, things. Yeah, I've heard but that here, both ways. Yeah, but here's the good thing. Because he's talking to a professional from Titan Medical, if he's taking certain peptides like biotin, let's say yeah. for example, yeah. and he's got a thyroid problem, she's gonna tell him, "Hey, before you come in for your next blood work, you right. could do all these peptides, but make sure for like three to five days you're off biotin." I'm just giving yeah. an example. You know, I, I've ran the Pepsi challenge on that, guys. Huh? I Doesn't seen. nothing. No, because you know what biotin is. Biotin is a B vitamin. I don't. I it's just B7. Don't That's all biotin is. So when you take a B complex through your centrum or whatever it is, you're getting biotin in there. So, I mean, biotin is pretty much everything that you take if it's a supplement over the counter to a certain extent. Now, high bioavailability of biotin, like an injectable, that's what I wanted to run. Because I'm like, who cares about these little minute pills that probably don't absorb anything in your body? But right. injection-wise, you're going to get absorbency you're through there. So. Yeah. Yeah, the wow. the one the one person I looked at was was Sharice right at the bat, you know, because obviously when COVID hit and she lost like 50% of her hair, I was like, all right, well, we need to get you on a protocol. We're really going to get you up. So I was making her inject like two times a day on the biotin and I ran blood tests on her and I ran blood tests on other people too as well, just to see, hey, listen, is this true? Because they do say this and this is a great point, Mona, like, you know, for, for testing they say, listen, this could skew the result, change the result of what it says in a blood test. So you know, what I would say is, is that if you are on biotin per se, and you went and did your blood test and you didn't know about, you know, taking the time off and you see your thyroid messed up, then I would say, you know what, we should redo this test and then let's take you off the biotin and let's see if there's a change in this. All right. Okay. And then we can see, all right, there's been a change in this. It was definitely the biotin that did this. Or if you were off the biotin for that amount of time and your thyroid so like this, we have a thyroid problem. Right. And we have to we have to start looking yeah. at the thyroid then and start fixing that. So, you know, that's that's kind of how we look at it. If you have problems, you start taking things away and see what's going to resolve that problem. And if nothing resolve that problem, you have to really take a look at it then. But usually if you start taking things away, you'll find whatever the issue is. And then you can just plan around that. OK, let's jump over to another one here. I think this is interesting because this is kind of what we're doing right now sure are you discussing with new influencers coming out of the woodwork giving advice working out and on our multiple peds i'm tired of those types like sam sulik 
the, the, this guy, Sam, talks so much crap about working out. And the only reason he's where he is be, is today is because of PEDs. I've been following you for some years and glad you came out with the Titan group. Keep it going, Mike. Spread the knowledge you gained and learned from all the greats. I, I, I think I hit this right in the head. I think that there's a lot of people out there that think that, oh, I'm going to get views if I go out and I start talking about workouts or I start criticizing people. And then I start talking about PED use. What's the best cycles? What should get this? I mean, I see it all day long on my timeline. And I'm like, it, it's, it, it is, it, it's crazy because they are getting out and Sam, listen, I don't got anything against Sam. Right. I, and I don't, I don't agree to the full extent of it. I agree that, listen, he takes a lot of PDs. He's honest about taking a lot of PDs, but he does train guys. He might not have the best nutritional plan that I see eating the Krispy Kreme donuts and what he does. I might not agree with it, but that's what he wants to do. Do I think he should put out a better message for his followers? Cause they're a lot younger people. Absolutely. You know, saying, hey, listen, I'm doing this, but I probably wouldn't recommend all you guys not doing this. You know, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, they're getting paid off it. So, I mean, they're, they're like, they're monetizing off it. I can't hate on them for monetizing, I guess, but should they be putting out that message? Would I like to change that message for influencers Just, doing this? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, both. Um, yeah, I, I won't say anything about Sam. I, you know, he's a phenomenon. He really is because the, the I mean, world. You hate on my guy. Yeah, he, he, and he trains hard. And he trains hard. Yes. And he's having fun. But I understand what you're saying, and that's why I wanted to pull this question up because of the fact that you're saying who to watch when you watch social media. It's it's you kind of have to govern who you want to see and listen to. And and my yeah. recommendation has always been. Um, I, I really don't ask a lot of questions of the OGs. Uh, I paid attention to what they said and right. watched what they did. And, right. it, and it got me to where I am. And so it's just pick and choose, pick and choose what you want to do. Uh, I, I had a great quote. Um, if I'm crying, I don't want to mess this one up. Never take advice from somebody you wouldn't change positions with. Yep. Yep. And Agreed. so when you see somebody, you're going, oh, I like that. I'd change, I'd change, you know, in a second, you know. And so that's that's who you should be listening to and understanding what they're doing with their health and fitness. Um, and again, me and Mona and, and Johnny here and the whole Titan medical crew and my lifestyle is about the long game and, and trying yep. to do this right. Yep. And it doesn't matter you know, if you listen to us, great. If if you're the youngster and you go, forget it, I'm just going to go ballistic. That's it's going to happen, and uh, yep. I w wish it wouldn't. But you know, we can't control other people. Yeah, and like and that's, said, it, that's just what it is. It is yeah. what it is. Like I know me personally, I would go to the guy that has the most experience and has the best results out there. Like you know, like has done the majority of it. Like, and I, I I'm going to go back to you on Mike on this because. You are motivational for me, and I'm probably a lot of guys out there. Like, listen, at your age, that's the way that I want to look. That's the way that I want to be. So it's a motivational thing as far as that goes. But like, you got to pick and choose who you're going to emulate or who you're going to try to idolize or try to become. Because at that point, if you look at some of these guys, they aren't lasting long. How long do they got? Right? I mean, there's a lot of people that want to be with Dallas McCarver. Look how young Dallas died, dude. And I knew Dallas really well. So it was a shame. It was a it was a travesty to lose people like Dallas, but it happens all the time because some of these guys they don't know when to stop or they think that they can just do it. Boston was another good friend of mine, and Boston liked the extreme, being extreme, and he liked doing all these different things. But and he had a great following. But, but that was even closer to you because of the fact that he actually came in and saw you. You he saw did. the numbers, and you said, "Stop." I, I told him at that point in time, when he came in, he was in he was in a renal failure. He was worse than my dad. And I told him, I said, listen, I was like, you better go to my dad's nephrologist right now because he's the best in this area. I was like, don't I was like, don't mess around anymore, um, boss. Because he thought that there was this peptide out there that would rejuvenate kidneys. So he was going to start taking this in extreme. And I was like, dude, I was like, this is just not the way to go. And, you know, obviously, boss is not with us no more. But I told him right then and there, he was in renal failure. He didn't, you know, he was like, he was shocked. He's like, there's no way. He's like, I'm too young for this. And yeah. I told him, I said, listen, I said, these are what the numbers show. Like, you're going to need dialysis immediately. 
So I, I sent him over there, and he was like, that's the best thing you ever did for me, John. Thank you so much. You just said something, and I don't think people realize this. I, I don't think people realize that um, medication or even HRT or all this stuff works different for different people. Yep. And, and that's why the blood work is so important because of the right. fact there are people out there that can take a, a, a proper dosage and their lives tenfold mm -hmm. just, they, they exceed. And then there's people out there that take something and, and it might be toxic to their body. So you got yeah. to do the blood work. You got to understand that everybody's different. Yep. Your receptors are different. How it works with you is different. And man, we have a huge crowd today. And I appreciate you guys all coming out today. Yeah, so let's let's keep this going for a little longer here. Yeah. Um, pick and they choose gotta, who you listen to. Sure. They got a guy who says, I have trouble getting good shoulder workouts at home. I have trouble making the mind-shoulder connection. And oh, we talked about this last time. So mind to muscle connection is so important, guys. Um, you know, I cannot stress this enough. You really don't know you're working on a muscle until you make that connection. And then you can feel that muscle actually working for you. And that's really getting blood, blood flow in there and really feeling it and developing that muscle. Hercules Potion is one way that you can really grasp mind to mu muscle connection. This is just an amino acid injectable that's water-based, has nine different amino acids in it, and it will help you uh, connect with that muscle that you really want to connect with. Um, you know, Peter's been training with me more. So like now I'm like, all right, Peter, he's like, I want Hercules potion. I'm like, okay. I'm like, you can have the aminos. That's fine. You know? And he started doing them. I did his first chest shot yesterday. He was like, oh man. Like he said, we did what he worked out before he went to school. And like woke up at 5 a.m. Cause he wanted to probably be pumped. And he's like, Hey, he's like, give me a Hercules shot. I gave him one then. And they did two more at the gym with me uh, for, for, for the last workout. I was like, all right, Peter. I was like, all right. And he's like, he's starting to feel it. So I'm really happy with him because once you feel that, you get excited. Because I, I know I remember when I, I did not feel the mind and muscle connection when I was younger and stuff like that. I'd never felt that. I was just like, you know, you're going through the motions and you're doing it. But once you connect, I'm telling you, man, there's nothing like it. And you can really – you start really developing the muscle if you really be consistent. And I think this all goes back to what everything we're talking about and doing. If you want to be successful, one word, consistency. If you're consistent with what you're doing, your workouts, your eating, your sleeping, your drinking, whatever it is, you're going to be successful. If you're not consistent and you're inconsistent, you're going to have trouble. Uh, is it possible to overtrain as a beginner? Less than one year. Not getting sore, putting on muscle. How do I shock the body and get sore without messing my weak wrists up? I don't know. I lift heavy as possible every day. Good one. I mean, listen, is it possible to overtrain as a beginner? I mean, you probably have to do a lot. I, I, what I would say is, and this is just me, Mike probably has his own philosophy on this. I always tell people, I'm like, listen, train to muscle failure. In the beginning, like if you really don't know what you're doing here, train to muscle failure. Are you going to get sore every single day? You're probably going to get sore like in the beginning. Some people lose that soreness. And I always tell them, like, listen, change up an exercise maybe. I was like, maybe hit a muscle at a different angle or whatever it might be, and you might get some some, some more benefit from there. But um, weak wrists, work on your wrists or wrist straps if you really need them to, to really go through in the heavy weight. But I always work on the wrists. You always want to make sure your wrists are strong and forearms. That was another thing. Golf look, tennis elbow. Usually you get from straining your wrists when you're doing exercises, and it's right in here. Where Show me that? that motion again. What's that motion? There we go. There we go. All right. <laughs> all right. So get those this forearms. Is so different. Welcome to all the crowd that just hit this in a thousand views because of Johnny and his hand motion. Yeah. There. Yeah. Mary. So Johnny, do you do insulin sensitivity testing? Well, uh, Mike wants me to get checked out. I'd rather go through the doctor's office. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can do insulin sensitivity testing. We can uh, we can run it through a, a lab corp. I'm pretty sure. There you go. There you go. All right. One was everything. on here before, and it said, "It said, what does Mike Mike do for reverse aging? Because he looks so young." Hmm. That was a good question. It was definitely a good question because I mean, listen, Mike's been with us about a year or so, maybe a little bit longer now. And at that point, yeah, he does peptides, which I I think are hoping, hope, hopefully, helping beneficial to this uh, anti aging process. But he was doing pretty good before we got to him too, as well. So I I can't take all the credit for what he's doing. So at that point, like. 
peptides, I think, are, are, are the main main game changer for you. What do you think? I, I think what's what's cool is is you get to a certain age and and it speeds up life yeah. and and the aging process. Your 20 to 21 is very minimal. You know, you're yeah. the same cat. You're you saying feels good. But when you're closing in on those, you know, over the 50s and closing in on the 60s, a year is like dog years. You know, it feels like eight years and guaranteed it's it's the the, the little things, the glutathione, the uh, NAD, oh, the, the, yeah. the copper, the yeah. um, the uh, in, aminos. Um, just the recovery on that has kept me at such a, uh, frozen state, I guess you could say. I love Stan Efferdin's point of view, uh, cause Stan and me have these two pictures of me at 14, 15, him the same way. And then we have, you know, 40 years yeah. later Yeah, and there's very little change from me. Um, and then there's Stan Efferdin who went from a skinny wrestler and it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's just a pencil neck to a monster superhero. Right. And his point was, uh, see, Mike knows absolutely nothing about health and fitness. He hasn't changed <laughs> in 40 years. And if you know Stan, if if you know Stan and, and the, the understanding of that, I think that's brilliant. I love that. I yeah. love the fact that I've been able to slow it down as much as I have. And especially in these later years, you know, from 20 yeah. to 30, there's not much change for anybody. But right. looking at a, a, a going through puberty at 14, 15 years old and a guy closing in on 60. This is where I really noticed those little details that Titan Medical has been able. And I've used Titan Medical. <laughs> Trust me, guys. Um, you know, everything that they have over there, I do the research on and I try to get some. And even the things that you would think. Well, haven't you done L-carnitine before? No, mm -hmm. I'm going to do injectable L-carnitine. Because, mm -hmm. well, you're doing amino acids. Yeah, but I'm going to do injectable amino acids. I'm doing anything and everything. So that's the greatest thing about it. And so thanks for the question. It has helped me, um, and it continues to help me yeah. tremendously. Definitely, definitely. Um, this guy with, uh, what should test level be at age 30? So this is a good question, right? Everybody asking the question, what should my test level be at this age? Well, it doesn't matter if you're 18 to 99 years old. A normal testosterone range can be between 264 and 916. What should your level be at 30? So at 30, I would say a good level it would be around 7 to 800. If you're at, I mean, and this this should be where it should be at. It should be at least 7 to 800. Um, is that the highest? No, but at that point, you're 30 years old. When you're in your 20s, it should have probably been about 900 to 1,000. Right. Like I just did. A, I just looked at a blood test from one of my buddies and um, his kids going off playing D1 baseball and he had the blood work done and stuff like that. So I looked at it for him. Kid had a 955 total testosterone hitting out of the park. It was high for yeah. his age. Yeah. Right? Which is good. Natural. Yeah. His free was 11.5. Yeah. So that's that's probably why he's in getting the, the you know, the, the work out of it. So. You know, I, obviously, I can't recommend any drugs that we do or anything like that. But I'm going to tell him, hey, listen, we need to look at maybe free testosterone. Maybe we, we can bring it up. And, you know, one that I I, I don't let Peter do, and I, I told you to stop and stuff like that, because cortisol levels would be ashwanga. And that's one thing that I could see that maybe free testosterone coming up with, you know, through, through labs, but cortisol levels going down. So I don't know. It's uh, it's it's messed up. But at that point, you know, you want to be at seven, 800 at 30 years old. Y younger, you should be higher. But at that point, I've seen 30 years old come back at 200. Hey, I, I got a question. Uh-oh. I do. I'll see you later, Mo. Yeah, I'm go pick, pick up, up Go pick up man. Junior. <laughs> go get tight. <laughs> so my question for this person is, how do you feel? Because yeah. I, know guys, I know guys that are at 800, 900. And they're sluggish because their free testosterone is what it is. Yeah. And so it, the only reason I, I say this, because we had a talk, I had another talk with a, a thyroid doctor for Mo. Yeah. And it was funny, the two concepts, the, the, the first doctor was, holy shnikes, we got to take out your thyroid. Uh, you, you got Graves disease, this, that, and the other thing. No. Well, what's cool is a year 
passed since then. And that lady was fired from US, UCLA. So I love the fact that it was a book smart person that got their doctorate and has no clue. She just goes right, right off of what the computer right. spits out. This is what right. the person has. This is the level to get boom, boom, boom. And it's like, right. the paper only shows half the story. What's the patient right. look like? And so right. I, I, I get you asking, you're at 30, but are you tired? Are you, are you retaining some fat around the belly? Is the cortisol too high? Is there things going on? Or are you feeling great? You know, because yeah. yeah. I know guys that are at three, 400 that feel great and their yeah. levels are good at that level. I mean, you got to do the blood work. You got to do it. Definitely got the red flags, Mike. He says, I feel fatigued. Head is cloudy. Those are two main oh. red flags. Yeah. So again, it, it really doesn't matter where your levels are at now, right? If it comes back at... 200 then it's clear but if it comes back at 700 it's still not good for you right. and what you need and that's where johnny and the team helps yeah. you out um, if you feel fatigued and cloudy i guarantee your number is not a 700 and there are some guys out there that feel like that because of free testosterone but most of these guys i'm telling you their total is down and usually when you get the total the free will go back up if you have to fix that level the only reason I say is I had these three natural bodybuilders come over and talk to me and their, their T levels were all just beautiful. 750, 850, a thousand, all natties. And their, and their free was eight, 11, just like the other kid. And it's like, wow, you got great testosterone and none of it's working. It's yeah. like, holy that shit. Sucks. That's like, it's like all up in a barrel and there's like a, a little pinhole like this is coming out of. That's, that's the best example I can give for that. Like the reservoir is just full, but there's only a drop coming out at a time, man. You're really getting that. That sucks. I and mean, especially if you have those natural levels like that. If you have naturally a thousand, like we've talked about before, that just, it's pretty much unheard of guys. Like you don't see people, out of, especially older gentlemen, you don't see, and when I say older forties, fifties, right. You don't see those numbers. I've seen them in their, their early thirties, obviously in their twenties for some people. But when you start getting to those, those higher levels, forties, fifties, I usually don't never see numbers like that. It's usually on the lower end or like 500. Like that's pretty, I, I think that's the most common number that I would see at the highest. And then it's usually all lower from there. Yeah, go get checked. Go get checked. Mostly fatigue and that that mind. It's such a new age thing, but it's great because yeah. the NAD could be added to oh, the yeah. testosterone. That's going to clear the mind up a lot, and then the NAD is going to help that much more. Yep. And then if he's got issues, the uh, boost to the IGF at night. Yep. Boom. Yeah, that's a big fix for sure. And blood work, guys. Remember, we can set up blood work or anything that we do nationwide for you guys. It's very simple, very easy to do. It's the most inexpensive blood work you're going to get in the country. Apples to apples testing. It's very in-depth testing for you guys so you guys can see what's going on. Holy shnikes. We got everybody in here. We just hit 11. I like it. Like it. <laughs> All right. What do we got here? How do you deal with high blood pressure issues when using tests? Is there is there a test that keeps BP stable? So – testosterone might bump blood pressure a little bit, nothing crazy. Like it shouldn't be putting you at high levels of even blood pressure. Usually with people that are ex ex uh, starting to experience high blood pressure levels when taking testosterone is because they're just taking testosterone. And what happens is, is they start developing high estrogen levels, which then results into high water retention. And the water retention will raise oh, your blood oh, pressure. Oh. It's all domino effect. There's not like, you know, it's, it's, it keeps adding on. So at that point, like you got to make sure that your estrogen levels are taken care of. If you need an aromatized inhibitor, that's, what's going to do it. It's going to get all that water weight off you. It's going to lower your blood pressure. Um, and it's going to balance things out and how you feel mentally too stable. You want to feel mentally stable. And if those hormones are off, you will be mentally unstable to a certain degree. Like you, you just, you'll, you'll be very sensitive. Like start breaking down crying for no reason you're like why are you crying bro like or you're watching a, a sensitive commercial and you're like man i've never cried to these commercials and you start crying at a commercial and you're like uh oh like there's something wrong like that's that's if you know your ear is too high oh it, it might be a problem with me then because i cried at the beginning of john wick when the dog died <laughs> that's all right that's all right <laughs> uh, shane mcmahon i'm 51 and have been told i'm pre-diabetic I'm insulin resistant, and how can I reverse it using supplements due to sciatica? My bloods are good, and my heart is good, too. So if you're pre-diabetic and you're insulin resistant, 
Now, one, I would definitely look at your testosterone levels too as well. At 51 years old, like I said, if you get those things in effect, it could help with sugar levels to a certain degree. But the other flip side of this is if you want to use one medication to just balance both of these, like semi-glutide is going to turn you from pre-diabetic down to regular person, hemoglobin A1C wise, and it's also going to reverse insulin resistance. Super cool. I mean, and at that point, what you need to do is, is you need to make a change in your lifestyle because diet needs to obviously change if you're pre-diabetic. So sad. Man, guys, thank you. Thanks for everybody coming out. Johnny, do you got another 10 minutes? Are you okay? I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm good. You okay? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're coming in, so go yes, for it. Uh, this might be beyond you guys, but I got my blood tested and I have a lot of creatinine in my urine. Does that mean I'm consuming more creatine than my body needs? I'm taking five grams a day. So no, the, the creatine and creatinine are a little bit different. So, uh, you know, creatine is not creatinine. If you take more creatine now, what can that do to the creatinine? If you're taking creatine and taking too much, if you're taking too much creatine and you're not drinking enough water, this can dehydrate you. And this can affect your creatinine levels and your bun levels and your EGFR. Um, and that's what your kidneys basically, you know, what, what it tells how your kidneys are functioning. <clears throat> Those three correlate. Uh, together and they can give a, a picture of, hey, listen, are they in good shape, bad shape or not? Um, I, you know, I just came from the nephrologist doctor with my dad yesterday, um, which he's good. He's stable, which I'm very happy with. He got off two major medications and that's because he's lost the weight, which is he thinks is not a good thing, but it actually is good that he lost the weight because now he's getting healthier by his body not having as much stress on it. So it's really, really cool to see this. Um, but, you know, I was going to talk to people about chronic kidney disease. So chronic kidney disease, right? You might not even know it, but if if you get an EGFR back on your blood test and you look at it and it says 90 on it, you're like, oh, cool. 90 is a pretty high score. But if you look at CKD in the chart, chronic kidney, chronic kidney, disease, kidney disease chart, you're within stage one of chronic kidney disease. If you're between 60 and 85, you're in stage two of chronic kidney disease. And then so on and so on, lower and lower. And then you get to four and then five is you're on dialysis and you need a transplant. So a lot of people don't even know they might be in stage one or stage two. So it's something really you should really look at. Um, and if possible, make sure you're hydrated. Before any blood test that you do, there's a couple of things you should do before these blood tests, depending on which blood test you're getting. But before any blood test, you should hydrate really, really good. And this could definitely change some of the results that you might get because if you go into a blood test and you're dehydrated like really really dehydrated it could throw off a lot of different things like electrolytes on your blood testing and it could throw off your kidney uh functions too as well so these are things that you need to look at also it's interesting because most people think uh creatine they don't understand the muscle breakdown on the yeah. test and all yeah. these other things that go into that play thank you yeah. for asking thank you for asking yeah, but journey Johnny knows this stuff. So That's there's good. not a question you guys could probably ask that he doesn't know. And if he doesn't know, he's he'll have I'm it down by it. next Tuesday. So I'll, I'll definitely let you know. I'll research it and find all the answers for you. David Will said, what is the relationship between 925 uh, nanograms per deliter, uh, total T, and free T at 10.6? All natural, never taking any PDs. I don't know that relationship of how that works together. So this is just what Mike talked about, what we were talking about. Your total testosterone is at 925. This is really, really good. No matter what your age is, 925 is a good score. It's a lot higher than anybody's going to be out there. Now, when we talk about free testosterone, so you're, it's at a 10.6, which is not too good. And I don't know what lab you went to. There's different reference ranges, but 10.6 is usually low on all the labs, unless it's like a custom doctor that has his own reference ranges. But at that point, like, you got to look at it. All right, cool. Your total is balling, but your free is not. And when we talk about it, we talk about your reservoir that holds all your total testosterone. And then we talk about, you know, that pump that's pumping your free testosterone. And that's what your body's utilizing. And you're not getting any of it hardly into your body from the reservoir. So that's the correlation. And that's kind of how they work together. So you want it to be full. And then you want it to be free. So at that point, like opened up wide mouth drinks type deal. Like, you know, if you drink from a regular water bottle, it's like this big of an opening 
or you get like a Gatorade that has a big opening, you get a lot more liquid in you. That's kind of like the example I would say. Like you want that big lid, but how do you get it? It's tough to get when you have a total that high without wrecking the total. I'm just being honest. Like there's things out there like Danazol that will work and they will bust your free up to 25 or to 50, you know, and at that point, but you could damage the total testosterone. It might not be as high. Now, me and Mike have had the, the uh, conversation, yeah. right? Well, who cares? Because we have the free testosterone. You're utilizing more of your testosterone and that could make you feel better. It could. I just don't want somebody. The only reason that I, I always say this to people is because we would put people on these treatments and they would feel better. But when they did the blood test, you know what they get hung up on? We get complaining. I had an 800. Now I'm a 625. Yeah. Do you feel better? I feel better. But I could feel better if it was an 825 where it was. And I'm like, well, so th this is where me and Shree's like, hey, listen, we're not going to play this game. We'll be very transparent with people. No, at that smart. point, like, you know, you, you, you do what you do what they want to at that point, because I don't want I don't want you being upset with me and blaming me because your total testosterone went down 150 points, but we raised your, your free up 40 points and you feel a hell of a lot better and you're going to gain a lot more muscle and have a lot more energy. So, you know, I, I basically tell them this, I said, I, I tell them, listen, we could try this effect. We can use a Danosol if you really want to do it. If we do it and your total testosterone starts cranking down. Don't worry, because if you really want to, you can go on testosterone. If you don't want to go on testosterone, you're going to have to try on clomiphene or something like that to bump it back up. So I always give them the, the different options on the table, and then they can pick what option they want to go with. Is is that the only side effect? Is that That's the it. only side effect? Of it. Possibly. The, 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 and it. Now here's the reason why, if you guys were wondering why, I understand why John has to do this, because because mm -hmm. I understand people and, and their, their th thought pattern of, Oh man, if my T level is in 900, that's I'm I'm King Kong. Right. I've been around the greatest, and 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 this comes to uh, power lifters. It's so amazing to, and it's on record. Uh, some of these world champion goal setting power lifters, their range, their free testosterone is like you're talking about in a great range. Everything is being used. Yep. But their their testosterone levels are in the high fours to high fives. That's as high as they are. Mm -hmm. So you got these guys that are setting world records of strength beyond you know these nine hundred these thousand pound squats, and their T levels are just at that level. Yep. But for them, that level is fine because of the free testosterone is working so well. And again, mm -hmm. you can be pumping, and 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 everybody knows this. You could be doing whatever you want. You could be the guy at Gold's Gym, Venice, taking whatever the biggest guy said to take. Right. And you're not getting body changing, except you're right. getting acne right. and these, these traps that go up to everywhere, but everything else looks terrible. Uh, yeah. You're losing your hair. Guys, there is, and that's what's great about Titan Medical, there's a way to do this and do it safe to yeah. where it enhances your life. Yeah. And then there's a way to do this. And just like exercise can deteriorate and, and mess you up. So don't be, don't be that guy. Get in there, meet with them. And then for this one, my recommendation <laughs> is just the fact of get your free testosterone working. Yeah. That's the most important thing for you. Definitely. Um, I can't tell how old you are or stuff, but you're you're free. Your regular testosterone is great. But what's great about having a Ferrari in the front if it's out of gas? It's like, yep. what's the point of having that? Like, yep. I got my McLaren. No, no, don't drive. It has no wheels on it and no gas. Yeah, it's not going to get very far there for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. You should get blood work done with Titan Medical and get working on that. And then Absolutely. come back to us in 30 days and tell us how you feel. 100%, man. Oh, man. Uh, what do we say here? One guy said, I'm at 144 and 4.6 free. <laughs> a smile with a cry. You need to get some help. Julian, we got you. Call or text 727-389-3220. Uh, go for another one, Jeffrey. Hey, Big Mike. Or hey, Mike, big fan. I'm 16 years old and in 13% body fat. I'm benching 265, but I wow. want to bench 315. Okay. And also saline. Do you think bulking up is the best option to achieve my goal? First off, at 60 years old, I wish I was benching 265. Great job. Uh, I mean, we, I was breaking down to Peter the other day. You know the percentage of people that can only bench 225? It is ridiculous. It's minute, man. It, I'll it's give you like, 
So at, at my first powerlifting meet at, at 14, I, I got a 275 bench. This kid's impressive. How heavy are you? And 13% body fat is not bad. I hope you're 16, so you're still going through puberty, even oh, yeah. if you had your growth spurt. I would rather you eat right now. You're 16 years old. You got another eight years, a legit eight years of growing. Do not, and this is one of the biggest things that people do not understand. Just because your genetic potential is a 6'2 person, bad nutrition will not allow you to reach your potential that you should have just in height alone. Right. So nutrition is huge, huge. And I don't like anybody at this age cutting weight or, or slicing and dice. If you're going to do it for three months and slice and dice for a show, great. The rest of the nine months or the year should be in a surplus of food and feed the body. You don't realize how well you guys are growing better than anybody at Gold's Gym Venice doing whatever they want. You are growing better. You're growing up and out. Yep. And, and this age to me is what, what I wish you guys would go back and look at my old stuff of me going through 13, 14 through this age. I, I was blessed to be around people that slapped me upside the head <laughs> if I missed a meal. Right. So yeah. th there on the left, you're talking about 16. That's me at 16 years old right there at 270 pounds. Yep. So, Damn. yeah, that's, you know, <laughs> 270 pounds. <laughs> state champ wrestler, also an all state and an all American there. But it's because I was eating. Everybody yeah. at our school was training. Everybody. Yeah. But I had one benefit that they didn't, and I understood because I was around Jeff Magruder and these guys, is that it was nutrition. And just because you go to Titan Medical and you start a protocol, please listen to them when they say drink your water and eat your food. And train. Okay? Because it really, this, you can, come on, guys. This is, if you're really serious about your body and what you're doing. But kiddo, I'm proud of you. Will you do me a favor and tag me? And Titan Medical on, on a, your yeah. next bench day. Now, how yeah. do we get your bench to 315? Let's mm -hmm. get your protein, get some carbs up there. Um, and uh, I don't know what your calories are at, but I would just bump it. Bump it for mm -hmm. right now. Keep mm -hmm. folks. And then also, if you can, start my power bodybuilding plan. Yeah. And just follow those numbers. You'll put on 50 pounds on that bench. Yeah. Uh, congratulations, too. And remember this. Your bench is going to go up quicker than the regular 30-year-old because you're growing. So not only are you growing because you're eating and training, yeah. but you're also growing because your body is going through puberty. Yeah. You ain't got that man strength yet. Yeah. It's so coming. You, you get a 315 at this age, kid. I'm proud of you, man. Yeah, Great man. job. That's at 16, huge. 16, thanks for being here and being smart. You want this. I can tell you want this. Yeah, that's awesome. Hey, Mike, any tips on optimizing sleep? My sleep has been very inconsistent. Yeah, that's Oof. a huge issue. And it's uh, the Titan Serene, right? Am I saying yep. that right? Yeah, the Serenity, yep. Titan Serenity um, is something I started on this last diet. And I've talked about this. My sleep is terrible, especially when I'm dieting. I'm, I fall asleep for two hours and I wake up. What? This changed everything for me. So, Touch base again. The number is down below. I'm thinking, I'm Johnny, you okay? Yeah, no, I was looking at my sleep pattern. I want to see what it was last night. And we were talking about it. Yeah, me and Johnny were talking about this because I sent him my numbers on, yes. on sleep because I, I, I got this watch thing. And my goal was to get my REMs to an hour and a half. Yep. So the, the more research I'm doing on this, that's where, that's what you need. That's what you need. And so I, I finally got it to that level, but it is understanding the second portion of sleep is more important than the first portion of sleep. Of course. And that's why they say get to bed at the same time and try to wake up roughly um, without the alarm. It all comes down to consistency. If you can set that routine and go to bed at the same time and your body, you'll train yourself. If you train yourself to do it, it will happen. I've done it. So I know like I'm, I've literally had the plan. I was like, all right, I'm going to go to sleep every day before 10 o'clock. And I did this a couple of years ago. And it was the best I ever felt. And I think it was the best I ever looked to, to a certain degree. 
um, you know, and it was just everything was working right. I've really been keeping track of my sleep, you know, like every day, like I show you mine, like my REM sleep last night was an hour and 49 minutes, which is pretty good. You know, I'm trying to I'm trying to get there. You know, I want to get that good sleep. So quality, quality scores have been like 80s, I think, like all month so far. I think I had 179. So it's really cool. The technology these days, guys, yeah. the data is everything. It is everything. Grab that data because that data will tell you the information you want to know. And like, you know, to know about your sleep patterns, whether it's a watch or I have a bed that tracks me, right? You know, there's a lot of different things. I know Apple's coming out with, um, and there's Samsung already has one. They have the health rings. And these things are going to be able to collect all kinds of data on you, which is really, really cool. Um, so I'm all about that. Like the more that we can collect, and that's why I do like Apple watches because they can collect so much data on you and health monitor. So it, it's really cool. And then, um, you know, you can in, in plug, plug and play in these and different things too as well to, to get a chart to see, hey, listen, how healthy really am I? Yeah. Did we get this? We got Yeah, we did. And we got that? Yep. 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 Um, but Johnny's right. And, and everybody try to, I got Wally talked me into this, Mr. World. Um, yeah. And so are the exact, I don't care. I go off of this percentage most right. of the time. And so it just, if you got calculation that you can kind of roughly see, uh, this has helped. This has helped. It's yeah. teaching me my REMs. Yep. Yeah. It's key. You really want to list stuff. How do you know how and when to push yourself as a beginner intermediate? What was the limit like for yourself the first one to three years of lifting Michael Hearn? I don't know. I mean, how do you know to push yourself? You, you just do, I guess. Right. Oh. I mean, yeah. Uh, you don't want to hurt yourself. So like, if you feel like the weight's coming down on you, I guess you might want to put the weight down. But at that point, like, I don't know. I mean, even for me, like if I like, let's say I do a set and I'm, you know, I want to go down, I'd go down half the weight on my fourth set and just pump it out even more and try to do as much as I possibly can. I think the more you do, the better, but you have to have intent with doing whatever you're doing. Cause if you don't have intent, it's a waste of time. And that's something you said last week. Like if you just go in there, you're just doing the motions you're just doing wear and tear and you really don't have the intent and you're not really putting yourself where you need to be. So I think that uh, that's the biggest thing. And pushing yourself is doing a couple more reps, doing a little bit longer. I mean, that's really pushing yourself, but I um, agree. You know, that's, that's Johnny, right. Johnny's right here. And, and it's, you're new to it. So I would every once in a while, test yourself and, and go ballistic. I, I call it get nasty, yeah. get in there and go crazy. But most of the time, just go, there and be smart and intelligent train smart connect to the muscle yep. it takes a long time so i know you're asking in your one to three years but my one to three years i, I was a nine-year-old training around my four brothers and, and, and around the best power lifters in the world i went off i could would have put my head through the wall if they told me to so i'm not the best to ask at that position but i'll tell you this now you know, over 40 years later it's still going in and being intelligent. It really right. is being smart. You can guys can watch my lifting. I move through it uh, like just it's precise. There's there's a reason why I move through the way I do to to make sure I can continue to do this. But also it, it's what Johnny does is taking full circle takes me back to the beginning of the show where we talked about setting your body up to be strong and that's where the peptides come in that's where the aminos come in that's where if your your testosterone levels are off or your free testosterone is off then you pull in the hrt set right. your body up to be strong food mm -hmm. training mm -hmm. and with optimizing through titan medical mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. jeffrey give me one more thanks again everybody for coming out today man this is the same guy that uh this is the first question he asked, but it was the kid. So this is low T, dude. This is this guy has low T. He's had fatigue. He's had cloudy thinking, and now he's very irritable. Mm. This is definitely an imbalance yeah. for sure. If you're, this is another thing that happens with guys, and I'm not saying he's doing this, but there are guys out there that they go to a general practitioner, whoever it is, and they just get on testosterone. They get on testosterone, they feel good for first 30, 45 days, and then – these other issues start happening, high blood pressure, weight gain, water retention, irritability and sensitivity. So the irritability portion comes from an imbalance of hormones. Usually estrogen is really high or really low. And at that point, you become irritable like a girl. So when the girls go on their periods every month, and you're like, oh, it's hormonal. And they like, shut up. That is true. That is a true statement. 
So at that point, those fluctuate, and that's why they act the way they do, and that's why they get bloating and all these other things that come along with it. Same thing happens to a guy. So if you're having these problems, Skinner, you definitely need to get a blood test, and you need to get help and get things balanced, and uh, you'll be fine after that. Yeah, but you definitely are one of these people from the questions you've asked, Johnny. Get that blood work going, guys. Sure. Yeah, sure. definitely get in there. Man, thanks for hanging today, John. We took you we took you for a long ride, an hour and a half. But right. thank you, man. This is so beneficial. Love I love it, man. I love it. No, I'll spend all day with you guys, man. So it's all good to me. But we'll talk to you in a little bit, brother. I'll talk to you later. Thanks, thanks Mike. Guys. Thanks, everybody.